going to get in the wire here and start a second video tape. A couple other, uh, couple other pieces of equipment. Um, I don't know that the lighting will be suitable, but uh, for what it's worth, uh, we we got a couple of gallon containers, plastic containers that seem pretty good, and started some new uh, movements. Uh, these aren't ideal. But they're they're greater um, volume than than the ones I started with them on the last tape. Uh, so it takes more force, more action strength to pull them through the water. And there are a number of moves. I did I did moves with with two gallons, one one gallon in each hand. Which are not too much, except that I, I, I skin pulled all the skin off my the, the uh, first knuckle of each hand uh, because of the, the, the handle that, that isn't really suitable uh, for this sort of thing. Uh, so I had to content myself with using uh, a whole gallon, which is considerably more than than both of the smaller. Uh, handles that we had before. I'm going to have some made. It will allow us to do. And these movements are really quite special. They're derivative of the movement called swing and sway that we that we used to do. Uh, I'm going to. I'm, I I forgot to turn the fan off, which is probably producing too much background noise. So I'll just shut that fan off. There we go. Um, the swing and sway movement that we did with hand weights, I have a couple of little tiny hand weights I can actually demonstrate that. Uh, this is what I do on dry land. It's a movement that goes like so. I use much heavier weights. You can do that with with uh, buoyant buoyant bells, you might call them. Uh, you can swing up, but actually, you're better off trying to swing down and work against buoyancy in the reverse order. Almost all the exercises, in other words, appear to be backwards. What you'd swing up with in air, you swing down with in water to work, to increase the work, and to work against buoyancy. Obviously, the bigger the volume of the object that you're pushing through uh, the water, the greater the workload if you can keep it going steady. And that's crucial, of course. These are all intended to be steady uh, state exercises. That means at least five minutes. I think I've, I've mentioned that before in these you know, illuminations. Uh, and with a, a, an appropriately made a weight, I would have at least this volume. It might even be larger. I might make one that that's, uh, has a gallon and a half or two gallons for each hand. And that gets to be pretty tough stuff. I also noticed um, many differences in, in trying to do swinging movements generally. And here's one that I, I practiced yesterday for, oh, as long as uh, several minutes at a time. I call this an aqueous or aquatic uh, isotonometrics. They're isotonic movements and that I'm moving constantly but they're isometric in the sense that I have to really keep a, 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 a tonic uh, pressure to keep that uh, jug under the water. Because the jug, if I let it go, it really wants to come up. That, that's the, the force of buoyancy. So it actually will accelerate that thing. Now, accelerating the weight 
underwater is a, is, a, is a different sort of a problem than it does. If you were to swing a bat, um, if, if you were just to swing a bat in the air, you know what the feeling is like. You, you take a cut and, and you have to get the, the energy going initially. The initial force, just like throwing a ball, getting a bat, the bat uh, speed up has to happen from an initial uh, effort. But once you get the bat moving, it'll, it'll fly nicely through air. In water, it's a, it's a different story because uh, as soon as you stop, by, it doesn't accelerate from beginning to end. You have to keep the force going constantly, so the force is always um, it needs to be exerted. And that's a very different kind of a feeling. I suspect it does something different in terms of uh, muscle development and muscle physiology. Uh, I have probably some trouble getting, at this point, uh, using a large weight or a large volume displacer, whatever to call it, uh, I have some trouble getting anything like um, a respectable heart rate going. So uh, doing this even for uh, 10 minutes uh, without much, now when I add leg work, it gets a little easier. Now I might mention those, these kicks that I've been trying to develop because there's no question, these exercises will all have to be done in the manner of panaerobics, that is, muscle loading. There's no question that that'll be, that'll be crucial. But if you kick up, that, that's pretty easy because buoyancy tends to uh, bring your, your toes to the surface of the water. It's the return of the kick to the, to the pool bottom that's difficult and especially if you try to do it rapidly, which you should try to do, and you'll feel some strain in the groin there. Uh, it's all quite, quite different, and it is very much living in a different environment. What's interesting, and what I find increasingly fascinating, is that one would never have thought that, uh, you know, that I would make such a discovery of, of this different effect, having been a swimmer all my life. But swimming doesn't teach you this effect because swimming is oriented to get you from point A to point B as, as rapidly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, and so you're working against the clock and you're working at the surface and your body is horizontal so that the total effect of buoyancy is keeping you at the surface where you can sort of scoot along and, and, and make time. These exercises are calculated just the opposite. You can move if you want. Like so. I'm doing kickbacks, exaggerated kickbacks, and swing through with the jug. But uh, you're not going to make much time. You, you, you wouldn't want to. Uh, you, could, you could race somebody doing that, but the race would be a very slow race. Uh, Yeah, but it's a very different kind of effort. And it, it's so different that, that weight bearing, see, gravity works in the pool. I was going to say, well, you know, you're, you're, out, you're, you're, like, you're, you're like an astronaut. You're, you're uh, um, weightless, but you're not weightless. You're only weightless if you've if you got a, lung, a couple of lungs full of air, you're at the surface. That's when you tend to be weightless. But, if you stand vertical in water, you, you tend to hit, at least in shallow water, you tend to hit the bottom. And even in the deeper water here, uh, my feet never leave the bottom. This is a very good exercise. Um, and I think uh, would cause some muscle hypertrophy. It's my initial uh, notions are that it's not it's not that uh, 
uh, radically different from weight lifting. This, these are really pushing weights rather than lifting them. Everything is, and most of the work takes place below the shoulders unless you want to do other things. Now yesterday, I figured out how to work the biceps, which seemed to be a problem. Uh, and the way that the biceps are working, of course, I need larger uh, uh, samples. But by just a, an exercise like this is done by pulling the weights sharply to the side and then curling them in by, by bending the elbow, make a short lever out of it. So the, the extension out is a long lever, but the pull back in is a short lever that works the biceps. And works them well. I did a few minutes of that yesterday and had a little bit of bicep soreness to show for it today. But it looks like uh, it's easier for me to generate, by the way, a high, higher heart rate with these little guys than with the big clumsy jugs. Once I get them made into a, 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 a format that's, that resembles this, I have no doubt that with the big weights I'll be able to generate high heart rates. I actually did it the first day, but that's, I can't do it anymore because I, I have my, my knuckles are injured and I don't want to increase that injury. And you notice I, I can generate very good ter, uh, surface, constant surface turbidity with a movement like that or this kind of movement. Now, these are becoming old favorites already after a few days. I must tell you another effect. When, when I do a whole hour of this, which is what I've usually done, it's uh, very different than working on Panex, for example, and then walking upstairs afterward. After you do Panex, with some quad work, uh, you sort of fly up the stairs. It seems so easy by comparison. Not so when you leave the water. When you leave the water, it's quite uh, evident. You've not been doing much in the way of weight carrying. You've been doing some muscular effort. That's true. But it's, it's, not, it's not like weight bearing. And what happens is, I suspect, in an hour of non-weight bearing leg work, the weight bearing muscles relax. And when you start going upstairs, it feels harder. And somebody might want to know whether that could actually diminish your ability as a, as a weight bearer in the air in a gravitational field. I don't think so. Not unless that's, that was your, your, your habitat for exercise all took place in the water, and then I think it would happen. There are phenomena in the exercise world that, that sound a bit like that. For example, Runners, it's well known, uh, cannot jump well. Long distance runners, sprinters can, because they're strength oriented, but long distance runners oftentimes can't jump higher than about 10 inches, which is precious little. These are both good moves. Now I add the curl. And you can see that there's, there's enough surface turbidity, even though I'm keeping my hands under the water all the time. Uh, but we know you must be doing a legitimate Workload. My heart rate now.
is, is about 90, um, which is fair. But I'm not working hard either. There's very little respiratory effort. I can speed things up and do whatever I want. And of course, one of the things the aquatic exercises would have to learn, and that is not to take it as easily as they'd like to. As a matter of fact, that may be what's causing uh, water exercise to get relatively bad press where it comes to weight losing. Then it's very easy to relax the water. The things that are nice about it are that you can't fall. Uh, so if I slip on this slippery bottom of mine, uh, the pool surface is very slippery. Uh, there's no way to go because the water is going to catch me. In that sense, you have a greater sense of freedom in the water. But there is this tendency, and it's, and it's, it's I am omnipresent, to, uh, to relax. You have to think. Uh, now, I, I think as you strengthen, uh, it'll become more automatic to, to uh, move hard. But the, the, the surface turbidity is a good reminder of how hard you're not working, as well as how hard you might be. Kickbacks are also different. Uh, they're not so hard to do, but they're hard to, to do it in terms of a complete range of motion. It's hard to use the hamstrings so you can kick yourself right in the butt. Your foot tends to shut and stop somewhat short of that goal. It's rather enjoyable. I mean, yesterday I worked out for an hour. Um, I like it. Um, partly, uh, maybe because I'm without the, the ideal equipment that I need, I may not be working out as hard as I do on dry land. Uh, There's some great range of motion stuff like I'm doing now. And I'll do it with uh, Big guys um, these, these movements, if done in, in very shallow water, uh, are great, great for the hip and the gluteal area. I can easily conceive that, that um, music would have a, a large part to play in aquatic exercise for, for a number of reasons. But one is it would serve as a metronome to keep you honest. Because uh, you don't want to languish your way through this. Thing. Water provides a way of really doing some exceptional kinds of hard work. The, the oblique muscles, the abdominals, back extension, uh, with your feet flat on the floor, to do a flexion. See, with these big babies, when you're down in the water, uh, you can then do uh, kind of eccentric work by uh, allowing the arms to return, the hands to return to the surface ever so slowly. I'm trying to do this, I've done it, hurt these pinkies of mine. And there's considerable muscular work both in pulling that weight downward against buoyancy 
and inhibiting. It's exactly like panics, in which you inhibit your, your, your movements uh, toward the earth. Uh, Very uncomfortable. But as uncomfortable as they are, I can well imagine how, how very comfortable the um, nice thing about these uh, hand implements is that you, you never have much trouble finding them. Just let them go and they're, they're floating around on the surface of the water just waiting for you. These movements are, are, are literally undoable on dry land. There's no, there is nothing that would correspond to it. You cannot do it. So that I would think that rather than you know, thinking in terms of uh, air work inhibiting your water work, or water work inhibiting your, your work in air, that they are, uh, from a muscular point of view, uh, mutually uh, complementary. Uh, and especially for people who are interested in fitness rather than sport. Although I, I have noticed that swimming has begun, I think I mentioned on the other tape, but swimming becomes um, much easier after you, after you do a few of these workouts. And I, I have all of maybe three and a half or four hours in total compared to you know thousands of hours doing other things. And now my. The notion of, of how much the resistance is affected by uh, the silhouette that you choose to pull through the water. If you pull this baby through this way, it's relatively easy. As soon as you turn it on its side, then you, you increase the resistance by some magnitude. And uh, so that will be a consideration in the construction of any um, these buoy bells that see, I, I think it's impossible to do respectable uh, um, aqua exercise uh, without using plenty of arms. Not some people that I, I'm, I'm getting gathering literature now uh, slowly. And some people have used the arms, but they're, they're sort of used as a kind of a uh, mild embellishment. Now, I suspect that by the very nature of leg work, when you're in the vertical, not, not the horizontal posture, in the vertical posture, it's hard to, we're going to have to do things to amplify leg work for one thing. But beyond that, uh, the, the hands are, which will always be at the surface, are in a beautiful position to do a long strength. That is to do the movements that will, in court, will fuse um, aerobic work with uh, a considerable strength. I don't know where the limits of that are. One of the things we know uh, from air experience, in, in the air lab, you might say, is that um, As you add strength to an aerobic movement, you tend to reduce uh, the capacity, the, the, the aerobic uh, levels of intensity that you can achieve. Now, we found from training that that's, that's kind of a temporary situation, but there'll always be a point where if you load up enough, if you put enough hand weights in your hand while you're walking, for example, you're going to eventually get to the point where you can't replicate your, your unencumbered, let's say, um, aerobic load. 
Uh, that just makes sense. You know, if you make the, the weight 100 pounds, you can only lift it once. Uh, you can see there'd be no aerobic uh, quotient at all. Uh, but what you see in training is that this year you might be able to do with seven pounds what you could do with six. But eventually the point up the scale with eight or nine or 10 or, or 15 pounds where you can't really um, knock out a respectable aerobic uh, workout. It's, it's just too muscularly de demanding in the, in the strength uh, mode. This is a great one uh, because I'm, I'm down so low uh, and I can do a little kick and return after each uh, sweep. I have to figure out a vocabulary, a glossary for this system because things you want to say all the time and I and find myself reaching for words that, that aren't in my vocabulary. But, Sleep would be a good word uh, and, and reflects uh, the word we use for, for oars uh, in rowing. And it's about the same thing, although uh, I get, a, I get a, a better workload using small weights. Uh, like in this fashion, rapid, than I do with rowing. No question. Time goes fast here, uh, it goes fast when I'm talking, of course, but uh, it goes fast um, when you're in the water and, and listening to music and working out to music, especially. There are dozens of, of um, buoy configurations that I can think about that would be uh, nice to work out with. And most of them probably could be made by some plastic, some, some uh, injection molding procedure. Very great deltoid exercise. And this one, when I do it this way, is a combination of deltoid, trapezii, back here, uh, some lat exercise, pectoral exercise, and some biceps. Oh, and triceps, of course. So the whole, I'm sure that Terry's major and minor, all the rotator cuff muscles, Super spinalis are getting a fairly good workout. Now there, right there, I started to take it easy. I could watch the water turbulence uh, subside. I can't wait to get the uh, gas analysis equipment full side here so that we can see what a few samples of these movements generate in terms of calorie loss, oxygen uptake. Think I'm getting reasonable. 
hardening, I would say around 90 to 100. And I'm not working fast. It's another slow aerobic venture, this one. Water. In the water. Is because 
even though this, this would do it, I have enough power, general power, to both move fast enough and uh, continuously enough to keep me apply. I'll try to do it. No, it won't work. I'll watch the difference if this is visible on, the, on that piece of tape. Watch the difference. It's not easy, but I imagine if I work at it, I could stay here for a couple of minutes at least, and within a few days, uh, now, what might work are webbed gloves. Webbed gloves might work in a trick like this. But um, this is all by way of uh, learning about, about the water. I think I have the, uh, I know I have the fan on. So I'm going to go turn the fan off. So the sound would be a little better. These shoes, these aqua socks are great. Uh, I mean, they, make, they make a tremendous difference. Uh, between the amount of work I'm willing to do in the water, Before I was getting guns for gunshot because of the sore soles of my feet. But these absolutely protect me and they fit perfectly. Which of Nike has no idea as to uh, what a good thing they have here. I bought them, they're regularly 40 bucks, I bought them for 15 bucks probably because nobody's selling them well. Oh, they're running. Oh, there's a phone. Hello? Hi. Where are you? My God, you're just a... Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful there. Yeah, it's lovely here too. Yeah. Every well, we have a lot of. I talked to Todd Cougar for about. And, and Jeannie and I, both online, talking about a half hour, hour. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's been, he's got several lawsuits now. He's mad because they wanted to go out and arrest him and all that. And, and we, they weren't given warning, and the dogs, if the dog has one flea, we're getting a $50,000 damage suit, you know, that kind of bullshit. No, I said, I want, one of the things I said is, what's a young man like you do to waste his time on crap like this? He said, well, it's an academic, he, he's bright, you know, he's, he's absolutely nuts. He is crazy, he doesn't know how crazy he is, because he thinks, he has a justification for all this. And I brought up, I said, you know, my wife is a good person and was good to you guys, and she's not a well woman, you're, you're really not treating her well. He said, well, I don't believe in that. I believe if you do evil, it'll come back to you. But, and, yeah, he's gonna get punished for that if he's really doing something wrong. He didn't mean it. But he, he says that she screwed up. If she had done it right in the first place, Debbie, and that it would have been fine. It would all have been settled then. But, so Gene said, well, what about all the time you spent there? And, you know, he, he says, well, that, that wasn't right either, you know. He admitted it wasn't right, but he, he says he's gonna, they call back, he's gonna sue the three, two or three lawsuits for not, and he, he says, you'll collect it all, it, it, all the money will come out of her pocket because you'll sue her for malpractice. Yeah, he really is. I said, what is it that you want anyhow? I said, he, he said, right, he called Gene and said, all I want now is to get out of his, 
is to get my stuff out of there, my four dogs and all that. And they're petting me. I, he's, I, he's, I said, well, how do we know what the hell you, your dogs did to that place there? He says, they're petting me. Now, that's a bit of psychosis. As though a pedigree dog couldn't damage them, you know. Anyhow, that, forget about that. And then, I, then I went up to get your... Well, I guess. Yeah, well, we told him we sent the key. We, but I said, right now, that key is at the magistrate's office. Why don't you go and do your thing? Anyhow, he, he's threatening, 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 threatening. But, but mostly because it's an academic exercise that teaches them the law and it teaches them to teach people not to do right or wrong by the law. You know, you know. Oh, it's, it's, he's nuts. And I, I went up here to get your car fixed and we got it so that it closes, but you have to open it inside the car. The key won't work. Oh, it never did? Oh, well, then that's fine. That's cool. So, that, all that's fine. Well, we're going to probably go out. And you are feeling good? All right, then have fun, girls. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Bye, bye. Well, anyway, more, more, that's, that's, that's a, after this digression. These, these shoes, as a brand new consumer of, of this exercise, now, uh, then after four, uh, I can tell you that if these shoes make the leg work uh, a breeze, I'm going to make it fun. I'm not, I'm not hurting myself. And when that gets greater, then of course the arm work gets greater. Now this thing that I did here against the wall demonstrates uh, beautifully the point that water, why water working by itself won't work. It's not, yes, you can do more work per unit time walking in the water. The point is, that's not the point. The point is you can't walk fast enough to generate absolutely high workloads. That's the problem. See, this is great stuff. as to how to preserve them, how to keep them, uh, uh, whether they are attacked by chlorine or not. So that's the way they're get just packaged for quick sale. And uh, although they'd be wonderful around the beach, I presume they'll tolerate that kind of salt water, which is really high concentration. Great kickbacks, and, and I can feel some increasing strength. This strength that you gain this way doesn't really go far in terms of uh, weight bearing. You know, there's not much weight bearing, period. And you have to get it all through the dynamic part of the movement and you're really thrusting the limb through the water, so to speak. It's just like when you hold these weights out here, when they're not dynamic and they're not in motion, there's no, there's no bearing. You're not bearing the weight there. Not body weight, but you're not bearing the, the weight of the item. It all comes from me working against the resistance that the water grants us. 
I think it's a very interesting exercise. What I don't know is, what I don't know is how the, the air exercise, like pan -X and heavy hands and the extender, pan aerobics extender, how they all work uh, in relation to uh, this, this aquatic exercise. In other words, how they complement each other. What kind of additions or subtraction effects are caused by going both routes. See, that's what I don't know. But as far as body flexibility, and pushing a lot of joints through a lot of uh, range of motion that's sustainable because of the slow motion that water creates. You have to consider that water is a perfect place for the application of strength. And to my knowledge, there are very few people, some of them mention it in their advertisement, but you don't see that they've done anything to really uh, work strength. Now see, here's a great scissors -y movement. But that I, what will happen here is that I get better and better at it. No weight there, but just a lot of thrusting backward and forward. Uh, this scissors -y movement can be bad for the quads, hamstrings, and butt. And even some work with the calf. I love these shoes. I was staying away from the wire a day here and day there. Uh,
what happens when you approach the shallow water is that you can bring more uh, body flexion with you. You keep the handles in the water. I already know what sizes of these I need. And I have to find a manufacturer who will make me some prototypes. What I need is uh, one quart, two quart, maybe three quarts. To the proper shape.
you can see these are straddles, you know, like jumping jacks, using a, in the water. And now you notice that we're not getting the hands above the well, head in these movements. And I think that's, that's a slight disadvantage. Uh, I could overcome it by doing movements where the head submerged, but I can't talk to you that way.
loves this movie. Work your middle, no question about it. It's a good triceps exercise. This is just a forward, it's like the, it's like the movement of, uh, you know, toss the basketball uh, with two hands, but uh, accompanying this by big strides. You can really feel the hamstrings working when you try to get them up fast, get the calves up fast, kick yourself in the butt. As I said, it's not easy. See, this is wonderful. Um, it would be a lot more wonderful if I had proper shape uh, implements. I don't know what to call it. Boys. Hand boys. Then you vary this by pushing off to the side and kicking back to the opposite side. Something like a hand X move. This would be a great exercise for a basketball player, no question. It wouldn't hurt his elbows because it's, you know, it's got to have water-cooled quality and would definitely increase the snap of, of the triceps. You look at Michael Jordan's triceps, you know he's, he's throwing a basketball hard with two hands many times. I think it's just great. I'm enthused about it, you can tell, can't you? See here, you can, you can vary that leg movement to a kick and straddle. Kick and straddle. It's a movement that you absolutely can't do on dry land. So when you, if you would do, so if I had big enough jugs, uh, you'll excuse the expression, uh, and the right kind of handles on me, uh, I could really make this a tremendous, Exercise. I could also give Mikey a hundred ideas for how to do something for you. I haven't seen pictures of these yet. They're, they're just wonderful. I keep saying that, don't I? By changing your hand position on the jug, uh, you also make it a different kind of exercise. This is not so good because I'm pulling the jug through by from its end, so the, the surface uh, area and thus the resistance is lower. I much prefer some this this kind of movement. This is not bad because you can hook your thumb in there in that handle. And uh, I noticed some people are using jugs. They mention it in their exercise, the uh, exercise, but I don't know what they're doing with it. Swim, swing, 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 swing. This is great, great for lats and pecs, all that stuff. Uh, would be great for getting out of the sick bed and starting into, you want to start gradually. Water would be the way to do it because just playing weight bearing is too much at first. As far as convalescence from any kind of a sickness, I think water exercise is, is, is the best. And there's always a population of people getting over an illness who can't start right in, you know, rowing a boat or riding up hills on a bike uh, or running up a grade uh, or running a fast pace. I, I think I would, go, I would go on record and say for sure that I could devise an exercise Excuse me for that last. I could devise an exercise um, 
It would fit almost any person, regardless of what their fitness techniques are. I could devise for them a water exercise who would do well by the muscles they'd already trained before they got sick. If there's any questions. Sometimes I even snooze for 15 or 20 minutes and, you know, 
it rejuvenates, but this does too in a far greater caloric loss. And I, when I sneeze, I'm only losing about, oh, 80 calories an hour at the most. This isodonometric quality applies also to the belly muscles, I must say, to both the rectus and oblique muscles. It'd be nice also, wouldn't it, to see how swimmers fare. I, I read an article just this morning that suggests that some swimmers find these exercises to be uh, See, there, there could be a training effect. There could be a crossover uh, effect. Between aquatic exercises and swimming, that's better than, for example, running and swimming, which has been shown not to have such good uh, uh, cross effects. I'm doing a movement here now that's like, like an ice skate. I know that when the shape of these weights is perfect, that their effectiveness, and therefore the amount of work I'll be able to do, not, it's, not, it's not like running a race fast, it's I'll be able to work harder, not less hard when they're uh, properly made. Please 
tie up on the back of the loop. Then they talk a little bit about side loop. Nice. In this deep part of the pool, the deeper part, uh, it's too easy. It gets better in the shallow. Nice turbidity there. Look at my jug. I don't know if the camera can see the jug. The jug's really floating all over the place. You talk, you talk to her today. 
even at the end of that movement, at an ex its extremity, so to speak. Wants you to relax. 
I think the training in water will require a kind of a constant, just like the, the pressure in water, the buoyant effect. Uh, people exercising in water are going to have to think, uh, work, 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 uh, all the time until it becomes uh, ingrained. I, I think there is a powerful willingness to, to just do what water allows you to do, and that is float away. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep uh, muscles contracting under, under those circumstances. But, uh, if you say to yourself, for example, I'm going to keep this bottle uh, about a foot under the water, um, and just check yourself out to be sure that, that that's never transgressed, uh, I think I think it would be pretty good. And I haven't seen the, the thought of the water up until the last few days since I first tried that whole hour segment uh, is how do I protect my feet? I haven't had a single thought about protecting my feet. All I can think of is how, how wonderfully protected they are. Uh, Like it 
on dry land. What a, what a basketball dribbler would get from this. So I've already uh, figured out some moves for a number of athletes. It's fascinating. Uh, for certainly golf and baseball. Um, rowing, I haven't thought about. It seems too obvious. I'll, I'll sure come up with five or six for, for rowers because I do a fair amount of that. Uh, you know, crunching the body. See, rowers don't get any triceps exercise. And so this would be gigantic for, the, for that. Uh, and there are some, see this, both feet coming up into a crunch. But my gigantic rolling pin, you know, something that is five or six gallons large. Uh, you know, many, 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 cubic centimeters uh, would be ideal for that. There are many people who are now called sedentary, who don't do anything, who have a swimming pool and never use it, who could be persuaded. Somebody's alarm just went. Who could be persuaded to do some great a gentle exercise in the water that would be pan panaerobic, you know, would work all the muscles and get some heart training when it would get them out of that very risky uh, sedentary group, which now apparently, you know, involves uh, sixty percent of our population. You know, you know, Travis. Now I'm running in place. You know, like, it's like treadmill running. But see, you can do treadmill run without a treadmill in the pool. Sure, I'm boring. Whoever ever is going to 